Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. A whistleblower contacted our hotline about a moldy apartment problem. He claims it's causing serious health complications for his family. Valley News Team's Ryan Laughlin has his warning for other families. Well, I'm freaking pissed. I contacted Valley News Live, the whistleblowers. Ernest Peltier says he's got a mold problem. Something that needs to be addressed by our property managers. The mold is on the exterior of the garages just across from his ground level apartment. You can tell the wind comes right through here and if we open up our windows during the summertime or spring, the, all that's coming right into our house. He says the apartment company IRET misled him from the get go. They kind of underhandedly shown us a very nice apartment and then we got the apartment we currently have. What makes matters worse is the health of his mother. She had an upper respiratory system infection earlier last year due to the mold. And we fought that for, oh shoot, since her immune system disorder kind of knocks out her immune system, we fought it for a good three months. He says IRET property managers have said they'd fix the problem, but never did. Now he's moving out, concerned about health complications returning for his mom. I know that there's a lot of elderly folk in this area that, you know, depend on living in a healthy environment. He says for the more than a thousand bucks he pays in rent, this isn't worth it. If you have elderly folks that you live with or if you have grandparents or sick children, stay away from mold. From Grand Forks, Ryan Laughlin, Valley News Live. Multiple calls for comment from IRET apartments went unanswered. The Centers for Disease Control does say that people with weakened immune systems are susceptible to getting mold infections. And this story came to us through our whistleblower hotline. So if you have an issue you would like us to investigate, give us a call, 237-6576. You can leave your tip and our team will investigate. Valley News Live has new information regarding disparaging comments made by employees at the Stutzman County Social Services Office about local foster children. After calling the children, quote, crackhead babies, unknowingly in a voicemail on the father's phone, the parents still have not received an apology. Our team reached out to Stutzman County Social Service Director M. Burkett to see if an investigation has been made. However, she has not responded. The foster mother confirmed with Valley News Live that Director Burkett has received a copy of the voicemail and told the parents she's taking a further look into the situation. While the parents say they hope Burkett will do the right thing, they say they're still waiting on their well-deserved apology. We are gearing up for a winter storm that's expected to hit some areas pretty hard on Friday. And we're not quite out of the woods tonight either. Hutch, snow's moving into some areas? Yeah, we have snow developing out in the central Dakotas right now. And as we head through our evening, it's heading in our general direction. So, well, flaky follies will begin as we head through the close of our work week. First and foremost, there is a winter weather advisory for the Highway 200, I-94 corridors of eastern North Dakota and out in western Minnesota, Highway 10 down towards I-94. It's where we expect to see the most impact from tonight's round of wintry weather. That means we're expecting it to develop later tonight as we go through the 9 o'clock hour here in the Red River Valley and beyond all the way overnight into morning. Chance for periods of light snow and a little bit of wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour. So we'll keep you updated on your forecast because that's just round one. We'll have another system that'll be pushing its way in Friday night into Saturday. Winter storm watches posted for that. I'll let you know whether you'll need a shovel, a snowblower, or a snow plow to oh get around gosh. as we head toward the weekend. The winter grip is uh, not being released yet. Right, not yet. Right. All right, thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. There are new developments in a story the Valley News Live first brought to you about a fatal shooting on a bus in suburban Minneapolis. Two teenagers have been charged in connection with the fatal shooting that involved rival groups on a party bus in Invergrove Heights. Authorities say 40 to 50 people argued on the bus, and then as they were getting off at a movie theater parking lot on Saturday, that's when fights erupted. Gunshots were fired, striking 19-year-old Billy Ray Nobles, who was killed, and a 16-year-old was wounded. The two teenage suspects, ages 16 and 17, are charged in juvenile court with second-degree assault and first-degree riot. The 17-year-old is still at large. The Dakota County Attorney's Office says they haven't determined yet which teen fired the fatal shot, but say murder charges could follow. 
The Duluth Library confirms that a staff member discovered a bed bug in an area of the first floor, which led to a wider inspection and subsequent treatment of all three floors. The discovery was made last night, and the downtown Duluth Public Library was able to open for business this morning because of the timely response. The treatment product, known as Crossfire, was used and must be applied three times, with each treatment spread out one week apart to eradicate bugs at various stages of development. No bed bugs have been found at the other two library branches, but both will be inspected and monitored as a precaution. Police say a string of bomb threats made against a Bismarck High School this week appear to have originated overseas. The four threats made Monday and Tuesday forced multiple evacuations at Legacy High School. The Bismarck police chief said at a news conference yesterday that during at least two of the calls, the suspects wanted money. He says police are following up on several leads, some of which are pointing overseas. If caught, the perpetrators could face felony terrorizing charges at the state level and possibly federal felony charges too. Minnesota has joined a lawsuit filed by California's attorney general to block the Trump administration's decision to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census questionnaire. The lawsuit filed earlier this week in federal court argues that it will lead immigrants to dodge the survey altogether, thus diluting political representation for states that tend to vote Democratic. And the lawsuit states that will rob many communities of much needed federal dollars to fund certain programs. The Trump administration says the data is needed to better identify voting rights violations. A Twin Cities woman who lost her lower left leg in a boating accident is advocating for a change in state law after she was excluded from her husband's insurance policy on the boat. The woman lost part of her leg in the boat's propeller after she was flung overboard while the boat was making a turn on Christmas Lake in September. She is now spearheading a bill to ban family exclusions in watercraft liability policies. Boat liability coverage in Minnesota almost always excludes spouses and children, and those that do cover medical payments for family members often have caps and don't cover non-medical expenses such as lost wages. The Insurance Federation of Minnesota argues changing the current system would allow for fraud and abuse. North Dakota's Game and Fish Department has extended the application deadline for elk, moose and bighorn sheep hunting licenses. Yesterday was the deadline, but it's been extended to 11.59 p.m. tomorrow due to issues with the Game and Fish online licensing system. Game and Fish is making a record 334 moose licenses available this year, along with 408 elk licenses. Officials will decide in September whether to hold a bighorn sheep fall hunting season following a summer population study. From two to eight licenses are typically issued in years when hunting is allowed. Hunters can apply online or call the 1-800 number that's up on your screen right now. A AAA survey is making note of what a lot of us see every day on the road. The danger we're witnessing still ahead tonight.